To properly understand if your aluminum extrusion meets industry standards, you must be familiar with common types of extrusion flaws that may appear, such as twist, flatness, and straightness. In this video, we will cover the correct way to read the tolerance tables in aluminum standards and data, and to measure tolerance for flatness, the absence of curvature in a surface when measured side to side. Flatness tolerances apply across the width of the extrusion only. Different flatness tolerances apply to solid profiles versus hollow profiles. Flatness tolerances for solid profiles, including bar and semi-hollow profiles, can be found in Table 11.8. Table 11.9 contains tolerances for hollow profiles. Tolerances for square, rectangular, hexagonal, or octagonal tubes with a uniform wall thickness can be found in Table 12.9. Flatness tolerances are based on both the minimum thickness and width of the surface. The tolerance applies at any given point down the length of the extrusion. Tables 11.8 and 11.9 contain one specific value in each thickness row and width column. The value in each cell of the table represents the tolerance that applies to a flat surface up to one inch in width. This value is also called the tolerance factor. The tolerance factor can be used to calculate two other tolerances as well. First, it can be multiplied by the total width of the surface to determine the total flatness tolerance across the full width of the profile. Second, it can be multiplied across a shorter segment of the surface anywhere between one inch and the full width to determine a per unit basis tolerance, which is needed if there is a more localized flatness condition. The drawings found at the top of tables 11.8 and 11.9 help illustrate the concept of flatness for solid and hollow profiles. W1 represents a localized 1-inch width section and D1 is the gap over that 1-inch section to be compared to the per unit basis tolerance. W2 represents the total surface width and D2 is the allowable gap or total tolerance across the entire width of the profile surface. Now we'll walk through how to determine the allowable flatness tolerances on solid and hollow profiles. We'll start with this solid profile. You will need to know the wall thickness and width dimensions of the profile. In this example, the width is 11.667 inches and the wall thickness is 99 thousandths of an inch. Using Table 11.8, the applicable tolerance is 14 thousandths of an inch per inch. To determine the total allowable flatness tolerance across the 11.667 inches width, you simply multiply 14 thousandths of an inch by 11.667 inches to get 163 thousandths of an inch. Now that we know the allowable flatness tolerances, we can measure this profile's flatness across the full width. The tools commonly used to measure flatness are a straight edge and a feeler gauge. Start by laying a straight edge across the 11.667 inches surface. You can see a gap between the straight edge and the profile surface. Insert a feeler or taper gauge into the gap to measure this distance. The gap measures 63 thousandths of an inch, which is within the allowable flatness tolerance. Calculated earlier, 163 thousandths of an inch for total width. Flatness can be determined on smaller extrusions or extrusion features such as the short leg on this profile that has a surface width of less than one inch. In this case, the tolerance up through one inch will apply, which is four thousandths of an inch for solid profiles. Flatness tolerances also apply on a per unit basis. To illustrate this, we'll use a three and a half inch square bar with a concave condition near one corner. Using Table 11.8 to determine the allowable flatness tolerances, we find the tolerance is four thousandths of an inch per inch of width. Lay the straight edge across the three and a half inch width. We see there is a gap towards one corner of the bar. Using a feeler gauge, the gap measures 0.009 inches. Using a two inch span as the unit basis where the flatness condition is concentrated, the allowable tolerance is eight thousandths of an inch, which is determined by multiplying four thousandths of an inch per inch by the two inch span. 
In this case, the 9 thousandths of an inch gap is out of tolerance over the 2 inch span. Next, we'll discuss flatness for hollow profiles. Tolerances for these profiles, along with square or rectangular tubes larger than 6 inches, can be found in Table 11.9. First, determine the width and wall thickness dimensions for this two-void hollow profile. The width of the surface, excluding the corner radius, is 5.134 inches, and the wall is a uniform thickness of 118 thousandths of an inch. Using Table 11.9, the allowable flatness tolerance is 6 thousandths of an inch per inch of width. Multiplying 6 thousandths of an inch by the profile's width of 5.134 inches, the allowable flatness tolerance across the full width is 31 thousandths of an inch. To measure flatness, lay the straight edge across the entire width and use a feeler gauge to measure the gap between the straight edge and the profile's surface. The gap on this surface measures 19 thousandths of an inch, which is within the allowable total flatness tolerance of 31 thousandths of an inch. There are important footnotes for each table that may or may not apply to your extrusion, depending on the geometry of the profile or certain alloy temper conditions. Get your copy of Aluminum Standards and Data, which contains the tables covered in this video, from the Aluminum Association's bookstore. It's available in U.S. or metric units. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and engage with us on social media. Thanks for watching.